So here's a small but very cool new feature in the latest version of Laravel 8. The framework can now lazily refresh your database when you're performing your tests. Let me show you an example. Here I have an older install of Laravel. And if I go to the abstract test case, this is what you get. So notice there's no reference to refreshing the database. Instead, because it would run for every single test, it wouldn't make sense to put it here. If I visit a feature, and if this imaginary feature would touch the database, I would add it here. So use refresh database. And you've probably added that countless times. OK, well, now in the latest version of Laravel, and I'm going to switch to a brand new project, three, two, one. Here's example latest. Well, now you'll see on test case, it automatically uses this lazily refresh database trait. And again, it does what it says on the tin. It will only refresh the database if you touch the database, hence the word lazy. And if you want to take a quick look at this, behind the scenes, it's still going to defer to refresh database, but it will only do that if we touch the database. So before executing, this is sort of like a hook that will be fired right before we touch a database. So only when we do that do we actually refresh the database. It's kind of cool. OK, so because this is now being performed lazily, it does make sense to put it on your test case, which means all of your feature tests no longer have to manually pull in refresh database or lazily refresh database. You can instead keep it on that abstract parent. OK, so to demonstrate this, I've set up a simple little typical post test. I have two tests here which handle the setting of a slug. One of them will not touch the database, and the other will. All right, so let's say if I had a post where I give it a title of some title, then we're going to be fairly naive here, but the slug should be some dash title. So I could say this assert equals some title post slug. I say naive because, of course, what if you have thousands of posts and some of them have the exact same title? Well, in that case, you would have a clash with your slug and you would need to append some kind of random string or an incrementing number to the end of it. But this will get us started. So we give it a run, and of course it fails. But now before I even make this work, think about how it used to be. If I were to go to test case and bring this back to the standard refresh database, and we used that, well, that would mean we're going to refresh the database for this test, even though we don't need to. So to illustrate this, why don't we go into the trait we're refreshing my test database. And yeah, maybe right here, just for a visual, we'll say migrating the DB. So yeah, now if I give the test a run, sure enough, I'm migrating my database even though it serves no purpose. So I'm paying a performance penalty for no benefit. Okay, but now if I undo this and I bring it back to lazily refresh database, if I give it a run again, we do not migrate the database. OK, very cool. So let's go back to post test, and we're going to make this work. Maybe, uh, of course, we can do this in a number of ways, but why don't we use a simple mutator? So maybe when you set the title, well, yes, we need to set the attributes. So title is title. But then maybe we'll also set the slug. And again, this is going to be fairly naive to start. String, slug, title. And this should get us going. So if I give it a run, it passes, and we did not touch the database. Cool. So let's go back to my post test, and we'll do another one. It ensures that the slug is always unique. So yeah, what if I have multiple posts with the exact same title? Well, right now, our logic would create the exact same slug, which is not allowed. That column needs to be unique. So what if I said here, um, how about post factory create? And I'm going to hard code the title, the sum title. So this is our given. Given we already have a post in the database with this title, and presumably with this slug, well, if we want to be redundant, I could have an assertion here. And that's going to, once we store that in a variable, that's going to pass. We already know that. But yeah, if we were to do it again, like this, well, now we would expect something else. So some people will create a random string. Some people will append a timestamp, or some will simply increment an ID. So maybe if we already have one, we'll start at two. And then if you create another one, it would go to three. That's fairly common too. 
So how about our test does something like this, just to prove that we increment it each time we add a new post. Okay, we give this a run, and now, of course, it does fail. We expected that, but I wanna point your attention right here. We touched the database, so only on that condition did we migrate it. Okay, now let's make a pass. Right now, we get an integrity constraint because we're trying to set the slug equal to something that already exists in the database. Okay, how do we wanna do this? If we keep this in line, our first step might be something like, well, generate a slug and then look in the database to see if there's a post that already has that slug. So we might say, while we can find a post that has this slug, and we'll say, if that exists, well, then we need to change the slug. So for example, maybe we would do it again, but this time we will append a dash and then maybe some kind of incrementing index. Okay and maybe we'll start at two there, and of course, increment. Okay, so I think that should probably do the trick. It's kind of quick and dirty, but let's go over this. When you set the title, we're also going to set the slug because the slug is based on the title. So we try to slugify it, and then we look in the post table, and we check, is there some kind of post that already has that slug? If one exists, then we need to change the slug, and we're gonna allow for that by using an incrementing index. So let's change it now to something like some title dash two, and then it's gonna run again. Could we find a post with that slug? If so, then it's gonna be this, then this. And only until we can't find a post do we continue forward where we set the slug. Okay, so if I give our tests a run, it does pass. Okay, so I think if I run everything, that should do the trick, and you get the general idea. So now at this point, you might want to add some kind of make slug, and that would allow you to do something like this. And this makes slug, where you take all of that and you put it in here. For the title, it might be useful to pass that in as a param, but I'll just grab that off of the object. And we get something like this. And let's see, oh yeah, we do want to return a string, so we'll return slug. All right. Yeah, that passes. Anyways, we're, we're getting beside the point of the video. The main thing to understand is all new installs of Laravel will include this lazily refresh database trait on your parent test case, which means you no longer have to manually add refresh database to every single feature test you create. Now, if you're not creating a fresh Laravel project, of course, you still will have access to this trait. You can just add it manually to your parent class and then visit all your feature tests and be sure to remove any lingering refresh database traits that you imported there. You don't need to do it, so remove it from each feature test and let it live on the parent.